Hey gang, welcome back to JDaddy's Garage. Let me say thank you for being here and watching my videos. I appreciate it very much. Today's video, I'm working on the 2004 Honda Civic that I've done a series of videos on. This was a light collision job that I did the repair work, put on a hood, fender, bumper cover, headlights, core support, radiator, got all that fixed up. And now I'm going to address the front brake rotors and pads. This car had been sitting for a period of time, the rotors got pretty rusty, and they just don't sound good. When you're driving down the road and you hit the brakes, it sounds rough. The pads are actually pretty close to needing to be replaced anyway, so I'm going to replace the rotors and the pads and show you how to do that. So in order to do this, I'm going to use my floor jack and go under the pinch weld on the side of the car where you would normally jack up the car, jack it up, get the wheel off the ground, put a jack stand underneath it when I be safe and then I'm going to take off the tire and wheel and get me access to the rotor and the caliper. So what I will be using in this task I need I have a lug wrench you can use the tool that's in your trunk to break loose the lug nuts you can also use your jack. I have a set of wrenches here I'm only going to be using the 12 millimeter and the 17. I use a mallet to break the bolts loose I don't like to abuse my hands I have a caliper compressor right there. I also have some brake parts cleaner. I use that to clean up the rotor because typically they're shipped uh, with an oil coating on them so you want to remove that. And as you can see I'm using these rotors and these brake pads. Both of these are from AutoShack. This is a um, vendor on Amazon. These are actually pretty cheap especially being ceramic. I also have some penetrating oil just in case the two retaining screws for the rotor are stuck. I ran into that on the other side, had to break those loose. So let's get started and see if we can't get this swapped. Okay, what I've done is I've turned the wheel to the right so that we can see the bolts easier on the back here. Again, these are 12 millimeter. I take a mallet to break those loose. Generally these come out pretty easily. Sometimes you do have corrosion. Now the caliper can come off. I'm going to set that up on top. And this will reveal the brake pads. So you can pull those out. You should note that the where the scraper is on your brake pad, in this case it's on the inside. You can set that one to the back. Pull this one out. Still a bit of life left, but worthy to be changed. At this point, you can check your caliper slides. Now these should move pretty freely. This one's a little gummy, and that one is too. So I will pick, take these out. Uh, you gotta be careful with this little boot. You don't wanna mess it up. And sometimes the boot comes with it. Sometimes you can pull it out of the boot. So what I'll do is I'll take these out, clean these up with some degreaser, reapply new grease and then put these back in when it comes time to put everything back together. For now I'm not going to mess with those. The bolts in the back here 17 millimeter. Now I will point out that the brake kit does not come with these little guides. So these are usually they're stainless steel. I've never seen them other than stainless steel actually. Uh, you can clean those up with a wire brush, make sure everything is out of those tracks, and that way your brake, new brake pads can slide more easily. Now the rotor itself, normally at these countersunk holes, there would be screws, there would be a fine thread, and it would be a Phillips head. These are already missing. So somebody has worked on this before and either did not replace these screws, which you don't have to. The wheel actually holds everything on. But if you have them, you want to remove them.
break that loose. Yeah, it looks like that screw was either broken off and this one is completely missing. So you, I think you can probably buy those at a uh, part store, but again, it's not absolutely necessary that you have them. So we're going to open up the new rotor. What I like about this is it comes with a set of instructions. Now I've cut that with the razor, but it tells you how to, how to set the brakes or bed the brakes into uh, the pads into the rotor. So good instructions. You might want to look those up. Like I said, the rotor comes in a plastic package and everyone I've ever seen has some sort of oil on them. So you want to make sure you clean that off. A little brake parts cleaner on, on a rag. Okay, you still want to line up these holes with the countersunk holes that are in the rotor, just because. That's the way it was made to go on there, I'm going to put it back in the same location. Now that the rotor is back in place, we set the caliper bracket back in place, get the bolt started in it. If you want to, you can look up the torque. I don't know what the torque is specifically on these. I just make sure they're tight. Now is the time when I will take these out, clean them up, re-grease them, and put them back in. If you wanted to, you could spray cleaner in those openings. It's probably not that critical. I'm just going to use some basic wheel bearing grease. Doesn't take a lot. When you put them back in, make sure those little boots catch back on the uh, collar that's on the pin. It's up here at the top. Hope you can see that. That's a lot better. Yep. Now you can see how thick these pads are. So the one without the scraper goes on the outside, and the one with the scraper goes on the inside. Okay, the next thing is to get the caliper compressed. So what I'm going to use is the caliper compressor, as I mentioned earlier. All you do is you take a brake pad, put it on the inside, put the compressor tool up against the brake pad and tighten it up. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. One is the way I normally do it, and I've had people com complain about that. I normally just compress the piston and push the fluid back up into the master cylinder. Other people have suggested loosening the bleed valve, put a hose on it if you want, and when you compress it, push the fluid out of the bleed valve and then add more fluid to the, to the master cylinder. I've had good luck doing it this way, I haven't had a problem, and I will just continue to do that unless I have some other issues. So simply turn that back slowly and while you're doing this, you need to monitor the fluid in the master cylinder. And let me show you that. Okay, master cylinder, take the cap. 
Now you can loosen this cap as well if you want while you're compressing the piston. It really isn't going to make much difference. But monitor the fluid. You can see here it's got a little thing that says max. You can go a little bit above that uh, when you're compressing the piston. And the reason is whenever you compress that piston, it'll actually compress further than it needs to. What I mean is you can put everything back together, push the pedal a couple of times, and that piston will back feed or back fill and compress down onto the pads and take up that little bit of extra space and that will also compensate somewhat for the extra fluid. But if this has been serviced or over serviced and somebody has added fluid over the life of the pads, you may need to remove some fluid. So I either use a turkey baster or this little generic syringe. And I can just put it down in the fluid and draw some out and put it in this oil bottle for disposal later. So it looks pretty good. I'm going to continue to compress the piston and I should be fine. And you'll fill the piston basically bottom out in the cylinder. So don't over squeeze it. And that's really as far as it needs to go right there. Take that out, remove this, check the boot on the piston, make sure it's not pinched or twisted or anything. Usually I take like a, you can use a toothpick, you can use just a small pick or a little screwdriver and relieve any bubble that might be there. And what, what happens is air pressure will push this rubber out a little and if you come by the edge and just kind of come into it a little bit, it'll let that air out. Now when you put this back on, make sure you don't twist the brake line. This hose should be straight and you can see there's, uh, hopefully see, there are some little lines embedded or embossed in the hose. If you see those twisted, that's not a good thing. You need to take it back off and realign it so that they're not twisted. So I'm going to push these plungers in a little. that caliper in place again I don't know what the torque is I just make them tight but I'm not trying to snap them off so there we go now I'll compress the or push on the brake pedal a couple times and backfill this piston with fluid So that's it. Really a pretty simple brake job overall. Now I do have the caliper compressor. You could use a C-clamp or a large pair of vice grip, something like that, to push the piston in. It, and it's not that hard. I've even seen people use their hands and be able to push the piston in. I'm just not really going to try that. So hope you found some value in this video. Uh, if you would, hit the thumbs up, hit the like button, share the video, all those sort of things. And that'll be it for now. And until next time, Take care of yourselves. See ya. Okay, that's all there is to it. This is one of the easiest brake jobs you can do, honestly. These Hondas are very simple, nothing complicated, and if you follow these simple steps, you can do the brake pad service enough. So there it is. Hope you found some value in this video. If you would hit the thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know what you think about this video and so if you found some blah blah blah. 
So that's it. Pretty simple brake job overall. Uh, not a lot of tools needed. Um, blah, 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 blah. Pretty simple brake job when it comes to these kind of cars. Not, you know, 